In this video, I'll be showing you how to organize your creative projects inside of Workflowy. So as you can see, I've got a very basic setup here. I've got a today's section, a place for my projects, a wiki. So if I'm doing any sort of writing or world building, or I just want to keep uh, track of all my assets, I can do that here. And then I've got a resources section. So let's first jump into projects. We'll open that up. As you can see, I've got a journal, a uh, place for writing, and then for brainstorming. One great way to use Workflowy is to keep a journal or some sort of a running log. Uh, just basically so you can keep track of all the activities, the meetings, the items, the things that happened that are related to your uh, projects, whatever they may be. This is so in the future, you can then go back and check exactly what was happening that day when something was supposed to happen or what it, you know, what, what you talked about with an, a meeting with someone, those kinds of things. So keeping some sort of a journal or a log is pretty useful, especially for any kind of creative project. Date tags make that really easy. So for example, I'm just going to create a new bullet here. I'm going to type today and then hit tab. And as you can see, we've created a new date tag. I can then add some notes and so on. So one nice thing about these date tags is that you can search through them. So for example, I'm just going to go ahead and search for today. As you can see, this is the only one that's coming up and I can open that up and see what I, you know, uh, any notes that I have in there, any documents, any images, who I talk to meetings, basically any information that I want to reference and I want to make sure that I tag it, I can just nest it under a date tag. And I can also add uh, other date tags within that if I wanted to. So next, let's close this right now. So as you can see, I've got two main areas here, one for posts and one for books. In this video, I'm focusing on uh, creative activities that have to do with writing, but you can keep track of any kind of creative activity and just use Workflowy as your database, uh, a place to keep your notes, to organize your team, to keep track of tasks, all kinds of things. This is the one that just made more sense right now, uh, but you can do anything really inside of Workflowy. So let's open up posts for just a second. And as you can see, I've got a slightly different, I'm actually gonna zoom in so you can see that better. Uh, I've got a slightly different setup here. So instead of a list, I've got a, a, a Kanban style board and I've got some different columns. So the idea is that uh, the different articles would be moving from left to right. So I've got some topic ideas here, um, moving them then to the outline section, then to a draft, then to the editing section, and finally to the published section. Within each card, I can of course add anything that I can add in, in a list. So I've got some items here. I've got some links for references. I've got some very important images that I want to use. And then, so if I want to choose a topic and then start to work on it, one way that I could do this is just drag and drop the card from topic to outline. And there we go. So this is one way that you could organize this. If you prefer a, a list type of a layout, you can very quickly switch to a list or to a board by going to the top right hand in the menu bar and then choosing the option. So I'm just going to switch to a bullet so you can see what that looks like. So that might be a little more compact. Um, if you're working on a mobile device, this might be a little bit better for you, uh, but I prefer to see it as a board. So I'm just going to switch it back and there we go. So as you saw, we've got some images here. I'm just going to expand this once more. You can just drag and drop images and files into Workflowy. You can also take images on your phone uh, using the mobile device and they will be added to a new bullet. Uh, so it's very easy to just kind of build up a database, a wiki of information, add references, all kinds of good stuff. For now, we'll leave the posts and jump back to the writing section. Um, and then let's jump over now to the book section. So I've got two books that I'm working on. I'm going to go ahead and expand this here. I've got a draft, some notes, uh, characters, locations, research, all the basic stuff that you'd want to have when you're writing some sort of a book. Let's zoom into the draft. As you can see, I've got some uh, tags here. Um, that you normally, so we would normally use these for assigning, using the add symbol to assign items to people. In this case, I'm using them to track characters within my draft. This is another way that you can use tags. You can keep track of uh, themes, topics, uh, important plot points, or in this case, characters. So I've got it set up where I've broken down my book into different acts. And I'll expand these here. You can see I've got some different chapters. I was working on chapter one. And within each chapter, I've also tagged um, which characters are involved in that chapter. And the way I've done that is I've created uh, tags as notes. So the way that we do that is on any bullet, you just you know click on it, and then you hit uh, shift and enter, or shift and return, depending on what operating system you're using. And the cursor is gonna move down, and you can start to add notes. So you can add some notes here. You can add links, you can add uh, tags, you can assign it. Anything that you can do inside of Workflow, you can do basically 
in a note. And you can also hit enter or return to add a new line so you can keep going down if you prefer. So that's what I've done right here. Uh, under the draft bullet, which we're now zoomed into, I've added a bunch of tags for the characters. So what that allows me to do is very quickly click on a character like Mr. Henry here, and I can see where Mr. Henry shows up in, in, my, uh, in my entire book. And so I can open up a different uh, chapter, and then I'll know that that character shows up uh, within, that, within that chapter. So right now I'm using tags to track the characters within the chapters, but you can see how this could be a very powerful way to track uh, different themes, different topics, abstract ideas, people that are involved in a specific project, and kind of very quickly filter items based on whatever kind of tags you want to use. So I can also uh, add multiple tags. So as you can see, in chapter one, we've got Clara and Mr. Henry. In two, we've got Clara, Mr. Henry, and Mallory. So I can add uh, or actually continue filtering by just clicking on a new tag. So I want to see all the scenes where Mr. Henry and Mallory also show up. So I can click those two and I can see that that only happens in chapter two. So uh, tags are very powerful and versatile if you just start to uh, tag your items basically. So now I want to show you how you can use a powerful feature in workflow we call mirrors to pull items from any kind of a project, any kind of a draft and move them to a different section where you can work from them. So for example, let's say I want to work today on chapter one. Um, I could obviously just, you know, go into projects, then go into writing, then books, then draft, and I think you get the idea, right? It's kind of a kind of a long way to do this. So instead, if I already know I want to work on chapter one, I'm going to go ahead and actually just mirror this. So the way that we do that is we open up the bullet menu and we scroll down to where it says mirror, or you can click the uh, hit the keyboard shortcut, depending on what operating system you're using. And then I'll go home and jump into the today section. So this is like my today uh, to do list. So I've got to buy some groceries. I know I want to write for two hours and that's what I want to work on when I'm writing for those two hours. So what I'll do is I'll hit enter and then tab to, to uh, nest this bullet and then paste the mirror that I just created. So as you can see, we've got a little diamond that lets us know that this is a mirror bullet instead of a regular uh, circular bullet. And it's that same chapter one uh, that was in my book. So um, we can also see where the original one is by going to the bullet menu for this item right here on the left hand side. And we've got this section here um, that only shows up for mirror bullets. So it lets you know how many mirrors there are and you can actually see where they are. So the original one is within my book section, book one, draft, act one, chapter one. And I can also see where the current one is, which is today, right for two hours, chapter one. I can also click on these to navigate back and forth. Basically, what this allows me to do is to start working from this list. So what I like to do is uh, star this section, which is the one that I work from. Uh, this is like my daily driver. I'm going to go ahead and star this section here. And that moves it over to the left-hand sidebar so I can expand it for just a second. We've got a section called starred, and we've got that right here. Uh, so if I'm on my mobile device or if I'm working from a different section within my workflow, I can always just click on this right here, and that'll move me to the today uh, document. So now I can just expand it and start to work from here. I can just continue writing and so on. So one really powerful thing about mirrors is that this is not a regular copy. Any change that I make inside of a mirror, like this one here, is going to be reflected in the other mirrors. So for example, if I make changes here, I'm just going to, if I add some new content here, then what's going to happen, I'm just going to close this and go home, and then we'll go back to the, the place where the original book is you'll see that the changes have now been added. Expand this and you can see this is the change that I made and now it's right here. So this is one easy way to keep everything organized, right? This could be a very, uh, this could very quickly become a very big project. Um, and I might not want to work directly from here, but I want to use this section to keep everything nice and organized and in order, but I can pull items by mirroring them from here into my uh, today bullet and work from, from here. So let's say that I buy my groceries and then I write for two hours or actually I, uh, I could either complete them or I could delete them. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete these. Now you'll note that I have the mirror in here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this, all of these. And there we go. We're done. We can just continue to add new items. Um, since we deleted the mirror and we had two of them, right? The original one is in the book section and the copy was in here. What's gonna happen is we didn't actually delete the, the original one. We can go back to projects, open up writing, 
and you'll see that we still have chapter one right here with all the changes that we made. So mirrors are a really powerful way to kind of create a live copy of any piece of information. In this case, um, you can pull pieces from your creative projects into another section. So maybe a board where you work with other team members or into a today or to-do list, complete them there or continue to work on them from there, get rid of them, and always make sure that they're still gonna be organized in whatever kind of a structure that you've created. Next, I wanna show you how we can actually share these items. So if you're working on these projects, you're probably gonna to want to work with uh, other teammates, collaborators, editors, designers, what have you, depending on what your project is. So one way to do that, I'm gonna jump back into the post. Let's say that I've continued to work on this outline. I've got an outline here, right? I've got an outline. And then I want, um, then I work on a draft. So I move that over. Now I actually want someone to edit it. So I've got someone on my team that does that. What I can do is drag it over to editing, drop it there and share this. So I could either share the, just the card, the, the content within the card, or even just a single bullet, or I can share my entire board. So let's say that I'm working on, on this project with a team. Um, we're a team that works together on uh, writing and publishing blog posts. So I'm just going to go ahead and share this entire Kanban board with them. So the way we do that is you zoom into the item that you want to share, click on the three little bullets right here in the, in the menu. You've got a share option. You can also do that to any bullet by just going to the bullet menu. And then you've got another section here called share. So you can share a, a specific item or an entire document, like in this case, the, the, the board. So I'll do that now by sharing this. You'll get this window, which will allow you to either create a secret link, and then you can also uh, choose or edit the permissions to make it either uh, full access, they can edit it but not shared, or they can only view it and not edit it. Um, or you can, if you want to be more safe and just share it with specific team members, you can insert their emails here and then choose the specific permissions for them. So I'm just going to do that here. Let's say tom at gmail.com. I'm going to give him full access. There we go. So you can see that he's been invited. I could change the permissions at any moment or even remove him from, from this share completely. So that's a very simple way to kind of manage uh, sharing permissions. And finally, let's go back to writing for just a second. Let's say we've got our draft here and it's completed. We've got all the acts. Um, it's ready to go. So I want to export this to work on it and further maybe share it with an editor and they prefer to use a different app or they just like to work within within some other application. One way to do that is once you zoomed into an item like the draft here, uh, we simply click on the bullet menu for that item that contains everything. So in this case, our draft. And then you have a section here called export. So if we click on that, you can see a preview of the formatted text that you're going to export, or you can also just export it as plain text. So you've got a couple of different options here that you can use um, to export that uh, content and import it to another application if you want to continue working on it from there. So I hope this video has been useful and giving you a couple of different ideas about how you can structure and organize your information inside of Workflowy to uh, keep track of your creative projects, share them with team members, and also just make it easy for you to work on them on the go.